Republicans in panic. I saw those headlines We're everywhere. We're not in panic, Howie. We're not in panic. <laughs> but the media say the Republicans are in panic, Mercedes Schlapp. And it all came from a Washington Post story that said the GOP establishment is really, really worried about Donald Trump or Ben Carson winning the nomination. And some are saying maybe they can get Mitt Romney to come back in the race. Bad idea. The last thing we need is to add one more candidate onto the debate stage. I don't think the moderators could handle it again. <laughs> but it's not just a bad idea. Is it a realistic no, idea? He's not, it's too late. I mean, as we know, Joe Biden decided not to jump into the race because he wouldn't have time to organize in Iowa and in these key states. Same thing for Romney. It's very difficult to raise the money, especially with how divided the, the donors are right now. And secondly, it's hard to organize at such being so late in the game. Well, I'm not challenging the Washington Post reporting, but you know, everybody just picks up the key snippets and use the word panic. I go, wow, GOP and panic. The media love that. But when we talk about or when journalists talk about the GOP establishment doesn't want Donald Trump and or Bed Carson to win this nomination, I'm sure that's true. But what is the GOP establishment anymore other than some party elders and maybe a few um, big donors? What kind of clout does I, this so-called establishment have? Well, uh, the IE, they would call it, put it, fall into more of the moderate branch or one that would want the politician versus the outsider. That's what you would pretty much call the establishment, including the GOP party leaders. Sure, but there was a time when uh, the Republican Party or the Democratic Party could exercise enough clout that they, the elders could draft somebody into the race. Yeah or could uh, cut off the money. Everybody goes out and raises their own money with these super PACs. And right. so I say, you know, GOP establishment, I mean, I guess it exists, but it doesn't really have the power to kind of blunt uh, a candidate's progress who's raising a lot of money and who's you up can't. at the top and of that's the polls. A, that's a great point. The, the, what we've seen is that the state parties, as well as the national party, the RNC, they've lost a lot of political clout and control to a certain extent. Uh, what you've seen is with the rise of the super PACs, a candidate that could be at 1%, for example, and has a really, you know, a sugar mama or a sugar daddy who's going to be able to give billions of dollars to their race, they can stay in the race. That's what that's the change that has occurred with these super PACs. By the way, if you heard Donald Trump is self-funding his campaign, he says Exa that a lot. Yeah, he's his own super PAC. So why do the media keep writing? Is it just reflexive because we've always done it this way, keep writing about the Republican establishment as if it could stop the steamroller that either would be right. Donald Trump or Ben Carson if neither of them Look, I, drop I, in the polls? I think the media likes the drama. I mean, this is something that we have not seen. It's unprecedented to see these two outsiders really right now dominating. I don't necessarily call them the absolute front runners because at 28 percent, 26 percent, you're not really a front runner. Get to 40, 50 percent, then we're talking. Well, it'll do for now. I mean, yeah, I can think of a lot <laughs> That's of all we've got right now. I can, think of, I can think of nine other candidates who'd like to be a 24, I'm sure, 26 percent. But again, these numbers are going to dramatically change, as we know, but uh, the media is going to stay focused on this story of the fact that the establishment may be panicking, which may be true, but <laughs> it's going to be interesting to watch how this plays out. And we're back here next week with more After the Buzz.